by popular demand. This is my unboxing of the Corsair H100. So this is, I can tell you already, this is going to be one of, if not the highest performance, pre-filled, pre-sealed water cooling kits available on the market. And Corsair, actually, this, this blew me away. They do not do themselves justice at all with the numbers that they're giving on the back of the box here. So, uh, you know what, I'll get into those a little bit more after. Why don't I talk about what this product is exactly. So, we're all familiar with the H50, the H60, uh, the H... Is there any, there's an H, yeah, H70, the H80. So these are all Corsair's uh, pre-filled liquid cooling solutions that are maintenance free. So it means you never have to fill it with water. They are high performance. They're also lightweight. That's one of the advantages of these pre-filled liquid cooling systems versus a heat sink because you can strap the huge heavy part of it, the radiator, to your chassis instead of strapping it directly to your CPU socket, which makes them more shipping friendly. It also means that you can carry the heat away from the CPU much more efficiently and exhaust the heat directly out of your case rather than exhausting it from the CPU socket area to the air around the CPU socket area. You can just kick it right out. So general advantages of these water-cooled systems are many. They are fairly expensive, but they do have the performance to back it up. So let's see what Corsair has to say for themselves on the packaging here. Corsair Link Digital Support is supported by the H100, so uh, you can be in complete control of your cooling, monitor a wide range of parameters including pump speed, coolant temperature, and fan speed, and customize your own performance profiles. Requires the Corsair Link Commander, which is sold separately. So there you go, uh, you will have to get the Commander if you want to take advantage of that particular functionality. All right, box contents, we'll get into that when we open it up, so don't worry too much about that. CPU compatibility is pretty much everything on the market right now, 775, 1155, and 1156, same, same mounting holes. 1366, AM2 and AM3. Uh, remember, AM2 and AM3 um, are also AM2 plus and AM3 plus in terms of heatsink compatibility. Cooling performance for the most demanding systems, this is true. Performance times two. See, this is actually probably more accurate than what they're saying over here. Control at your fingertips. The integrated pump and cold play includes push button control so you can select the fan speed and cooling performance setup that best suits your needs. White LED display lets you know at a glance which profile is being used. So let's have a look at this. All right, H100, they're saying is gonna be good for 66.5 degrees Celsius, okay? And they're saying the H80 is at 68.2 degrees Celsius. Let me tell you what is wrong with this picture. The H100, just by merit of being a dual radiator, has far more usable surface area for cooling than something like an H80, even though it uses a double thick rad. The reason that that test is so flawed is that Corsair is only clocking that CPU, that Core i7 CPU. Actually here, let me get all this stuff out of the box here first, and then I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna show you that chart again. They're only clocking that 1366 Core i7 CPU at 3.8 gigahertz. That means they're not really dumping a whole lot of voltage into it. Now at 66.5 degrees, you still have room to put more voltage into that CPU. I would say you should be able to get a significantly better overclock out of the H100 than either of these other coolers. And the reason is that as soon as you increase the heat load that you are putting on the cooler, a better cooler will start to distance itself far more from an inferior one versus if you have a heat load that's much smaller. So if you were to take a stock CPU and show this graph, I'm willing to bet all the water cooling solutions would be about equal. But as soon as you start to overclock the CPU more, overvolt it more, and dump in more heat, you're going to see dramatically better performance from any cooler that either has faster fans or more surface area. That is what all cooling comes down to surface area and airflow. All right, so let's look at the, at the radiator unit itself in a moment, and let's start with the documentation. So first thing here is we've got the parts list of everything that's included, as well as uh, picture instructions of how to mount the CPU block. Very nice, okay, stop, do not return this product to the store, very nice, little solutions guide, 2010. Oops, guys, it's 2011 now, that's okay. Um, mounting hardware. We find umpteen billion and one screws in here. So those are gonna help you mount it to whatever socket it is that you need to mount it to. We've got an Intel backplate here. Okay, so you can see these are adjustable for all the different sockets you might need to mount it to. And then we have the AMD hold down hardware here. All right, included fans. I'm 
not, oh, ooh, these are nice. Okay, I was about to say, I'm not a big fan of the fans that are included with the, uh, with the Corsair water cooling solutions typically, but I have not yet unboxed the, uh, the H60 or the H100, which are the new uh, Coolit ones, the Coolit designed ones. So this, as far as I can tell, is just a Corsair sticker over what appears to be the same fan that Coolit used to use. I can, I'm just, uh, I'm guessing here because the frame overall has very little flex in it. It feels like a much better constructed fan than the ones that I've seen included on previous Corsair liquid cooling systems. This is a very encouraging step in the right direction. And as we've come to expect from Corsair, it's got nice black cables on it, which means it's gonna look slick in your system. All right, so let's look at the H80 itself. We have power as well as an RPM monitor. So you are gonna need to plug these both in separately, but you can separate them out further if you need to route them to separate parts of the case. So, and they are black, so you should be able to hide them fairly easily in any enthusiast looking system. We've also got and this is related to the, uh, uh, the separate fan control that it does allow with the Commander software. We've also got other fan headers. So we've got one four pin, two four pin, three, four four pin PWM fan headers on the side of the CPU block pump unit itself. On this side, we've also got a little proprietary plug right there. And then on the other side, we have nothing except for the uh, rotating hose fittings right there. So what that allows you to do is wherever you've got this radiator mounted in your case, most cases are going to use this as a top mounted rad. You will be able to have flexibility on the CPU block depending where your socket is located and you're not going to put undue tension on the hosing itself which is one quarter inch and it is a corrugated tough plastic that will allow reasonable flexibility, but don't overdo it because if you kink it, there is a potential you could damage it. All right, the block itself has thermal compound pre-applied. Now I know for a fact, this is a very high quality thermal compound. You actually won't get much benefit from replacing it with an aftermarket one. However, once you've mounted it once and taken it off, you will have to take this off and reapply thermal compound again. Okay, just an FYI for you guys. Now let's have a look at the radiator itself. So this is a fairly typical uh, thickness for a radiator. It's a touch thinner than something from a hardware labs, uh, but it's about, I'd, I'd say it's actually, yeah, it's thinner than something from Swift Tech as well, but just by merit of how large it is, so let's hold up the 120 millimeter fan for comparison. So this is a dual 120 mil rad. You will get excellent performance out of it as soon as you start dumping more heat into it. So you can see, actually, you know what? Why don't we do the iPhone comparison just so you guys can see this. Now, I'm not gonna expect you to be able to eyeball whether this is going to fit in your case or not, just based on my video. What you will need to do is do a little bit of research. Now, I'm gonna tell you there's a few cases that it'll fit in no problem. It'll fit in the 800D, um, it'll fit in, Actually, here, maybe Crazy Russian knows. Do you, if, does it fit in the 650D? Yeah, he says it fits in the 650D. So anything that supports dual 120 mils in the top has adequate spacing, remember, not just for the radiator, but also for the fan, has clearance for the barbs to come out, and has the correct spacing for the 120 millimeter fan mounts, some cases actually have dual 120 millimeter fans, but they're spaced out. So what that means is that when you go to mount your fans on here and then bolt your fans to the case, you can see Corsair uses a standard spacing, which means that there's no gap between the fans. If your case has them like this, then it's not going to be natively supported and you may have to do some modding in order to make it fit. Okay guys? I think that's pretty much all that there is to say. Now I do want to do some performance evaluation of this unit just to back up the claims that I'm making about how it's going to perform very, very well. But I think that covers everything I wanted to do with this unboxing. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Corsair H100. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. And one more thing, sorry, I'm gonna do this before I cut the end of the video. Uh, this button right here is the one that allows you to see which profile you are using while the device is turned on. And it does have a white LED display, or not display, it has a white LED backlight behind it.